Have you ever thought about why some old movies are still loved today? Well, let's take a look at a film from 1952 called Clash by Night. This movie has a mix of funny, surprising, and sad parts that keep you interested until the end. It's not hard to see why people still enjoy it after all these years. Maybe it's because it shows real feelings and has a really interesting story. Or perhaps it's because it talks about how relationships can be complicated and says something important about society. Whatever the reason, Clash by Night is still popular today. Do you have any memories or stories about this movie? We'd love to hear them. Share in the comments below. Stay tuned for more cool facts about this classic movie. Exploring the themes of desire and complexity, the film delves into human emotions with an unapologetic approach. Directed by a renowned German filmmaker and featuring a stellar cast, it presents a compelling narrative that showcases the talents of its actors. Despite occasional heavy-handedness, the movie remains an intriguing exploration of love, lust, and human relationships. Overall, it's a noteworthy piece of cinematic history. In the golden age of Hollywood, two talented actresses came together in a film that marked a special moment in their careers. One actress, known for her memorable roles, shared the screen with another season star. Their meeting in this film wasn't just chance, it was a showcase of Hollywood's rich history and the talent that defined it. One actress, honored with a prestigious award, and the other celebrated for her iconic roles, joined forces to create a memorable movie moment. This collaboration serves as a reminder of the greatness that Hollywood has produced over the years. It's a glimpse into the past, where talent and recognition intersected to create something truly special. And it's a reminder of the power of cinema to bring together the best in the business. In Robert Ryan's family, his granddaughter Catherine from his son Walker holds a role as a research associate at Oregon Health and Science University in Portland. Notably, she carries the name of her godmother, Catherine Hepburn. Marilyn Monroe, a central figure in the film, achieved posthumous recognition when she was featured on a 111 euro postage stamp released by the French post office on November 8, 2003. During the production of Clash by Night, one of Monroe's early starring roles, she worked under the guidance of an acting coach. This coach, who also had ties with 20th Century Fox, stood behind director Fritz Lang during scenes. When the coach interfered in assessing the scenes, Lang, the director, became infuriated and insisted on her departure from the set. However, after Monroe's complaints and refusal to act without the coach, Lang reluctantly allowed her return with the condition that she wouldn't directly direct Monroe. These insights into the personal and professional aspects of the key players in Clash by Night offer a glimpse into the dynamics shaping the film's production. In Italy, her films were dubbed at the beginning of her career by Miranda Bonancy. As she matured, she was dubbed by the marvelous and prolific Rosetta Calavetta with immense success, particularly in Some Like It Hot. Zoe and Croxi lent her voice to Monroe once in All About Eve. In June 1941 at the Mill Pond Playhouse in Roslyn, Long Island, he acted in the plays The Barker and Petticoat Fever with his wife Jessica Cadwalder. He also acted in Angel Comedy with Cameron Mitchell before ending his engagement by appearing in William Soroyan's The Time of Your Life. When casting the leading man role in the 1943 Ginger Rogers vehicle tender comrade, RKO producer David Hempstead became interested in him due to favorable preview cards hailing his performances in Bombardier, The Sky's the Limit, and Behind the Rising Sun. Rogers initially turned him down, considering him too big and mean-looking. However, after favorable reviews and a second screening, she changed her mind, and Ryan ultimately landed the role. In a classic film from 1952, three remarkable actors joined forces, bringing their diverse backgrounds and talents to the screen. One of them, known for her long-lasting Hollywood career, considered her second husband her favorite leading man. They collaborated on three movies together, showcasing their chemistry and skill. Another actor in the film had grandparents who immigrated from Ireland, adding depth to his own heritage. His mother's lineage intertwined English and Irish roots with connections stretching back to colonial America. The third star, a captivating presence on screen, made history by gracing the cover of the first Playboy magazine. This cover, featuring her, became part of a special souvenir sheet marking Playboy's 50th anniversary. Together, these actors brought charisma and talent to the movie, creating a captivating cinematic experience. In the 1953 Laurel Awards, Barbara Stanwyck and her ex-husband Robert Taylor won top honors for their performances. Stanwyck's portrayal earned her recognition as the fifth top dramatic actress. Stanwyck was originally cast in Heat of Anger, but was replaced by Susan Hayward. Marilyn Monroe, also known as Norma Jean Baker, 
adopted the stage name Marilyn Monroe with the guidance of studio casting executive Ben Lyon, who aimed for alliteration and resonance. Norma Jean favored Jean Monroe, but Lyon persuaded her otherwise. Eventually, Marilyn Monroe became an iconic name in Hollywood. In 1952, a movie brought together three big names Marilyn Monroe, Barbara Stanwyck, and director John Cromwell. Stanwyck, known for her role in Cecil B. DeMille's Union Pacific, later got the Cecil B. DeMille Award in 1986. In her acceptance speech, she thanked DeMille and the Foreign Press Awards for their collaboration. Monroe made a lasting impact on the movie world. The character Rita Shawn in The Goddess was based on Monroe, showing her influence in the industry. The original Broadway production of the film focused on a Polish family on Staten Island. All these factors came together to make Clash by Night, a movie that connected with its audience through the performances of Monroe and Stanwyck and the directing skills of Cromwell. It's a piece of movie history shaped by talented individuals and an interesting storyline. In late October 1999, hundreds of items of memorabilia related to the movie were auctioned off by Christie's. Among the items sold was Marilyn Monroe's infamous JFK birthday gown, fetching over $1 million. She was discovered by Ronald Reagan, who sent a photographer to a factory in Van Nuys during the war, where she was featured. Furthermore, she was discovered by press photographers during a World War II photo shoot at the Radio Plane plant in California, where she was one of the employees. After leaving her job, she signed with Emmeline Snively's modeling agency. Marilyn Monroe, close friends with Ella Fitzgerald, boosted Fitzgerald's career by arranging performances at prestigious clubs, including some segregated ones. Paul Douglas, known for his role in Angels in the Outfield, had a part written for him by Rod Serling in The Twilight Zone. Unfortunately, he passed away before filming and Jack Warden replaced him, retaining Douglas' essence in the role. Barbara Stanwyck's biography, the first of an ongoing series, covers only the initial 33 years of her life, spanning a massive 1,000 pages. Marilyn Monroe, famous for her iconic image, was borrowed from 20th Century Fox for this film. She was the subject of the song Marilyn Monroe by Phoebe Ledger. In 1952, a blackmail attempt threatened to reveal her identity in a famous nude photo by Tom Kelly. Monroe cleverly preempted this by publicly acknowledging herself as the model. Hugh Hefner then acquired the rights to the photo for $500 featuring her as the sweetheart of the month in the debut issue of Playboy. Neither Kelly nor Monroe profited from the millions the calendar generated for its publisher.